Dragonflies are a familiar sight around our ponds in summer. But what is less well known is their amazing life cycle with an alien inspiring nymph, a remarkable metamorphosis and a vulnerable post-emergent stage that all come before this amazingly coloured insect predator we see hunting around our ponds, lakes and rivers. The life of a dragonfly starts as an egg. This egg is laid in or near water. Damselflies lay their eggs in plants using the ovipositor to cut into the stem. Most lay their eggs in aquatic plants growing or floating in the water. Some go as far as to go underwater to lay them, as the southern damselfly is doing here. Species like the scarce and southern emerald lay their eggs in plants grown in dried up ditches and ponds. Somehow they know it will refill with water before their eggs hatch in late winter and spring. And the willow emerald lays its eggs in branches overhanging water, forming these distinctive marks on the bark. The larger dragonflies use a variety of methods. Common data seem to take a scattergun approach, the female in tandem with the male, dipping her abdomen into seemingly any water body she comes across. Chaser and emerald dragonflies take a similar approach, but seem a bit more selective in which water bodies they choose to lay in. And the golden ring dragonflies thrust eggs into the mud at the bottom of streams to stop them being washed away. The hawker and emperor dragonflies land to lay their eggs in aquatic plants, or wood in or near the water. The southern migrant hawker usually lays its eggs in the damp mud of dried up ponds and ditches. In many species, the egg hatches after a few weeks, but if they were laid out of water or in a dried up ditch, they will usually hatch in winter or spring after the pond or water body has filled up again. They hatch into tiny aquatic larvae called nymphs. The long thin damselfly nymphs get oxygen to breathe directly from the water through their cuticle. The already high surface area of their long thin bodies is helped even more by three large flat tails called cordial lamellae, which act like gills and are packed with trachea, which insects use to get oxygen in and carbon dioxide out of their bodies. Dragonfly nymphs are larger and more bulky, so need a different method to get oxygen. They have turned their lower gut into a gill instead, but of course that means they need to get water in and out of their gut. To do this, they have to breathe through their rectum. Yes, dragonfly nymphs are bum breathers. But this ability has other benefits. Should they need to move quickly to escape a predator or find a new hunting area, they can squirt water under pressure out of their rectum and move rapidly by jet propulsion. These nymphs are predators of other pond life and use their large compound eyes to look for prey. And they have another amazing adaptation to help them with this hunting. The outermost mouth parts have become elongate and hinged, sitting under the head, and are referred to as its mask. The nymph will sit and wait, or slowly stalk its prey, and once in range, the mask shoots forward on the hinge and grabs the pond creature in a fraction of a second. This footage has been slowed down to one tenth of real speed. It then retracts its mask, and the nymph devours its prey with its mandibles. The nymph will molt a number of times as it grows, until it is ready to turn into an adult. The whole process from hatching to emergence will usually take one or two winters, but it can be as short as six weeks in species like the scarce emerald that live in temporary ponds that dry up every summer, or as long as seven years in the golden ring dragonflies living in the highlands of Scotland where the short summers slow development. They also need to avoid predators like fish, water scorpions and stick insects, and they can also be eaten by other dragonfly and damselfly nymphs, including those of their own species. When the nymph is ready to molt for the last time, it climbs out the water, usually up the stem of a water plant, and its exoskeleton splits along its back, with the wing and thorax and head emerging first, followed by the legs, and it then reaches out and holds on with its legs, before it then pulls the abdomen clear of its old skin, which is referred to as an exuvia, and its wings and abdomen begin to expand. The whole process is very risky, and a strong gust of wind can damage or dislodge the dragon or damselfly which will likely be fatal. They're also vulnerable to predators like birds, as at this stage they cannot move until their new body and wings are fully hardened. Pretty much as soon as they can, they take off and fly away from the pond to avoid predators and other territorial dragonflies, which may try to fight and damage them. They do not have their full adult colours at this stage and need to feed for a week or so and will return to the water once they have reached their mature adult form. The adults are amazing predators and some species have been found to catch prey in 90% of their hunting attempts. 
which makes them the most efficient predators in the animal kingdom. Males will be patrolling and looking for females, while the females are trying to lay eggs. The males will guard a territory which includes suitable habitat for laying eggs, chasing off any other males and attempting to grab females that enter their territory. When mating, the male will first grab the female around the back of her head with his claspers at the end of his abdomen, and he will then bring her up under his body and they form this heart shape to mate. Once this is done, often depending on species, the male will either let her go or keep hold of her to stop other males mating with her. The female will then lay her eggs, known as ovipositing, thus completing the life cycle. Having survived life as a nymph, the risky emergence to an adult, this female emperor is once again vulnerable to predators as she sits out in the open water. Wary of fish below the surface and hobbies flying overhead, she is instead taken by a coot swimming across the surface and rather than being able to lay her offspring, she instead ends up as food for the bird's young. Thanks for watching.